Time, this divine mystery, slips through our fingers like sand. Have you ever stopped to think how precious it is? Every moment we lose in distractions is a missed opportunity. And what if I told you that you, yes you, can be one of the chosen ones? Those who feel a burning flame inside, a connection that goes beyond the physical. What are you doing with that calling? We live in troubled days, and the urgency is palpable. The enemy whispers distractions, trying to lead you away from your purpose. But what if I told you that investing your time in prayer and helping others is the true path to the eternal? Mary and Martha teach us this in such a clear way. While one was concerned with passing things, the other sought what truly matters. Now, imagine yourself running a race, not for medals, but for eternal rewards. Being prepared for Christ's return requires vigilance and determination. What are you waiting for? It's time to reflect, to commit. Every small gesture counts. Join us on this journey, and may God bless you as you invest your time wisely. Spiritual Connection of the Chosen Sometimes, I find myself pondering what it truly means to be chosen. It's as if there is a calling, a connection that cannot be ignored. I feel that, in some way, we are all seeking something greater, a divine message that makes us feel whole. This identification is intense, and it's not uncommon for people like me to be drawn to experiences that transcend the mundane. It's a search that involves faith, doubt, and above all, a desire to understand our role in the grand scheme of life. When I speak about this connection, I realize that many around me share this feeling. It's as if we are all tuned into a spiritual frequency, seeking answers to questions we can't always articulate. This search, although personal, is not solitary. It unites us in a common purpose. The experiences we go through shape us, and each of us has a story that, in some way, intertwines with the divine narrative. In my journey, I've encountered moments of epiphany that have made me feel I am on the right path. Sometimes, it's a simple conversation. Other times, it's a moment of silence that brings clarity. These moments are like signs, and I believe they are essential to strengthen this spiritual connection. The feeling that we are not alone in this search is comforting and encourages us to keep going. It's interesting to note that this connection is not just about receiving. It's also about giving. When we find this divine message, we are called to share it with others. It's in this sharing that the connection strengthens, creating a network of support and mutual inspiration. The experiences we live make us chosen, but it's in unity and exchange that we find even deeper meaning. Ultimately, the spiritual connection of the chosen is a continuous journey, a process of discovery that never truly ends. Every step taken is an opportunity for growth and renewal, and even when I feel lost, the certainty that I am part of something greater gives me the strength to continue. This search is, in the end, a celebration of life and faith. Importance of time as a divine gift. When I stop to reflect on time, I realize that it is a divine gift that we often take for granted. We live in a world that values speed and productivity, but what truly matters is how we use the time we've been given. Every minute is a limited and precious resource, and it is crucial that we learn to value it. The idea that we can take time off for spiritual matters is a delusion we need to confront. Time is not just a measure, it is an opportunity. When I understand this, I see that each day is a new chance to do something meaningful. If I spend my time on distractions or activities that hold no real value, I am wasting this gift that God has given me. It's a responsibility I carry, and that, in my view, we all should carry. Every decision we make regarding time should align with our higher purposes. Moreover, the notion of time as a divine gift leads me to think about eternity. What we do in the present shapes our spiritual future. Time is, therefore, a bridge between who we are and what we can become. This perspective helps me prioritize what truly matters, dedicating my time to activities that uplift not only myself but also those around me. It's easy to be swept away by everyday concerns and forget that each moment is an opportunity for spiritual growth. Therefore, I feel it's urgent to adopt a mindset that values every second. By doing so, we not only honor the gift that is time, but also prepare ourselves for a future that reflects our deepest intentions and desires. Finally, 
the importance of time as a divine gift leads me to live with more purpose. By recognizing that each day is a blessing, I become more aware of opportunities to make a difference. It is a constant reminder that by valuing time, I am, in fact, valuing the life that has been granted to me. Urgency and vigilance in troubled times. Recently, I have noticed a growing sense of urgency that seems to hang in the air. We live in troubled days, where distractions are everywhere, and the true essence of who we are and what we seek can easily get lost in this whirlwind. It's a reality that requires constant vigilance. Urgency should not be seen merely as a feeling of haste, but as a call for us to be alert and aware. I believe that this vigilance is essential so that we do not stray from our purpose. Troubled days can lead us into apathy, making us forget who we truly are. We must remain attentive, not only to external distractions, but also to internal ones, those that cause us to doubt our motivations and convictions. The struggle is constant, and vigilance is the only way to remain steadfast. This urgency manifests itself in small actions of daily life. It can be as simple as taking time to meditate or pray, or as complex as making difficult choices that test our faith. Every action, no matter how small, matters. We cannot allow ourselves to be swept away by the current of the mundane. We need to be proactive, constantly seeking ways to stay on the right path. Vigilance also invites us to question our priorities. What really matters? What distractions pull us away from our purpose? These questions are fundamental for us to maintain a life aligned with divine will. By being alert, we can identify the moments when we let ourselves be carried away and, thus, reorient our focus. Finally, living in urgency and vigilance during troubled times is a choice. It is a decision to remain conscious of our purpose and to strive not to lose ourselves in chaos. This vigilance is an act of love, both for ourselves and for others, because by remaining steadfast, we can inspire those around us to do the same. Investment in the eternal versus temporary. When I look at life and the choices we make, the difference between the eternal and the temporary becomes increasingly clear. We live in a society that values the immediate, what can be seen and touched, but true value lies in the things we cannot see. Investing in the eternal is, in fact, what brings meaning and purpose to our lives. This makes me reflect on where I am placing my energy and resources. Material possessions are undoubtedly attractive. They offer us comfort and security, but they are ephemeral. However, when I focus on what is eternal love, faith, friendship, I realize that these are the investments that truly matter. They do not wear out, do not disappear with time, and, more importantly, have a lasting impact on me and those around me. This understanding changes the way I approach every decision in my life. It is interesting to note that we are often led to believe that success is measured by what we possess. However, when we take a pause and reflect, we realize that the most precious moments are those that cannot be bought. Our capacity to love, to connect with others, and to contribute to something greater than ourselves are the true treasures we should seek. Investing in the eternal also means cultivating a close relationship with God. This connection is what sustains us and gives us direction. As I prioritize what is eternal over the temporary, I feel a peace that cannot be found in material goods. This peace is a reward that surpasses any momentary satisfaction that the world may offer. Ultimately, the difference between the eternal and the temporary is a matter of choice. Choosing to invest in what is lasting is an act of faith. It is believing that, even though material possessions may leave us, what we cultivate within ourselves and in our relationships will remain. This is true wealth, and it is what we should seek in our journey. Biblical references as foundation. When I think about how to shape my life and give it meaning, I cannot help but look to the lessons the Bible teaches us. These are stories and passages that have resonated through the ages, offering not only comfort, but also practical guidance. For example, the life of Nehemiah is an excellent illustration of how determination and faith can guide our actions. He not only heard about the situation in Jerusalem, but mobilized to act, showing that faith without works is dead. This makes me reflect, what am I doing with what I know? Another example that comes to mind is that of Job, who, even in the face of great loss, maintained his integrity and faith. This teaches us that, even amidst challenges, 
it is possible to remain steadfast. Job's experiences inspire me to understand that life can be filled with ups and downs, but how we react to them is what truly defines our character. How am I responding to my own adversities? Jesus' parables are also rich in wisdom. The parable of the sower, for instance, speaks about the reception of God's word in different types of soil. This leads me to think about how open I am to receiving these divine messages. Am I cultivating fertile soil in my life, or am I allowing distractions and everyday worries to choke that seed? This is a reflection worth considering. Furthermore, the passage in Philippians 4 verse 8 guides us to focus on what is true, honorable, and praiseworthy. This is a call for me to filter my thoughts and actions according to these criteria. Keeping biblical references in mind helps me navigate a world full of distractions and uncertainties. It is a guide that drives me to live more intentionally and centered. Finally, as I revisit these stories and teachings, I realize that I am not alone on this journey. The lessons I have learned from the Bible are like beacons, illuminating my path and showing me where I should go. They encourage me to live with purpose and to seek a deeper meaning in every action I take. Call to action for the chosen. Life waits for no one, and this is a truth that becomes increasingly apparent. When we talk about a call to action, it serves as a reminder that we must be proactive, not just reactive. This means that, as the chosen, we have the responsibility to redeem the time. Every opportunity we have is a divine gift that should not be wasted. What am I doing to seize these opportunities? Being proactive goes beyond merely acting. It is a matter of discernment and sensitivity to what God is calling us to do. This can manifest in various ways, whether helping someone in need or sharing a word of encouragement. Often, we are swept away by routine, but it is crucial to stop and ask, what is God asking me to do right now? This could be a small gesture or something larger, but the important thing is to be attentive. Urgency is a recurring theme when we talk about opportunity. Time is a limited resource and life is brief. Therefore, it is essential that I do not procrastinate, but act with determination. When I see a chance to make a difference, I need to be willing to act, even if it means stepping out of my comfort zone. What I leave for tomorrow may be today's opportunity. Moreover, this call to action is not just individual but also communal. Together, as the chosen, we can make an even greater impact. By joining our strengths and talents, we are capable of transforming lives and communities. This leads me to think about how I can collaborate with others to fulfill this call. Being in community is a powerful way to amplify our mission. Ultimately, the awareness that we are on a mission motivates us to act with intentionality. Each of us has a role to play, and we cannot underestimate the value of what we do. Whether big or small, every act of kindness and every word of love counts. I am committed to being an agent of change, responding to this call that echoes in my heart. Preparation for the return of Christ. The expectation of Christ's return is one of the deepest and most significant doctrines of the Christian faith. When I think about this, I feel a mix of hope and responsibility. The life I lead today should be a preparation for that great day. This leads me to reflect on how I am living. Am I really aligned with God's will? This is a question I cannot ignore. Living in preparation means being attentive to my daily actions and decisions. The parable of the ten virgins, for example, illustrates the importance of being prepared. The wise virgins were ready, while the foolish ones were not. This is a clear metaphor for the Christian life. We must keep our lamps burning, that is, our faith alive and active. Am I ensuring that my faith is always ablaze, or am I allowing it to flicker out? Furthermore, this preparation is not just an individual matter. As a community of faith, we are called to encourage one another. The Bible teaches us that we should exhort one another and focus on love. This means that, while I prepare myself, I must also help others on their journey. Unity is essential, we are stronger together, and this is an important aspect of our preparation. In times of uncertainty, remembering the promise of Christ's return brings comfort and direction. It is a reminder that this world is not our permanent home and that we have a greater purpose. This encourages me to live with hope, even amidst difficulties. Am I constantly seeking ways to reflect this hope in my life and in the lives of those around me? 
Finally, living with the expectation of Christ's return is an invitation to a life of vigilance and purpose. I cannot afford to be complacent. It is a call to action, an invitation to holiness and diligence. Every day is an opportunity to get closer to what God desires for me, while also preparing the way for those who do not yet know this truth. Reflection and personal commitment. Sometimes, I find myself thinking about how I am using my time. It is easy to get lost in the routines of everyday life, isn't it? We wake up, work, take care of obligations, and at the end of the day, we wonder where that precious time went. Reflection is an invitation to look within, to understand if we are truly investing our time in things that matter. It is an opportunity to reassess our priorities and make necessary adjustments. I try to ask myself, what truly has meaning for me? And more importantly, what has meaning for my spiritual journey? Self-assessment is a powerful practice. When I sit in silence, I can perceive areas of my life that need more attention. Sometimes, I let myself be carried away by distractions that, deep down, do not bring satisfaction or purpose. Recognizing this can be uncomfortable, but it is essential. Personal commitment begins with that first step, the willingness to look inward and confront the truth about how we are using our time. Moreover, committing to invest my time more wisely is not just an individual decision. It is a pact I make with God and with myself. Understanding that each day is a new opportunity to do better motivates me. It is not just about avoiding what is negative but actively seeking what is positive, what truly enriches my life and the lives of those around me. It is a conscious choice that requires discipline but brings immense rewards. It is impressive how small changes in how we use our time can have a profound impact. Dedicating daily moments to prayer, meditation, or reading texts that nourish our souls can transform our routines. I notice that when I do this, the other areas of my life become more balanced and meaningful. Personal commitment is an act of love, both for myself and for those I love. Finally, this reflection and commitment are not a final destination. They are a continuous process. I am always learning, always adjusting. The important thing is to keep moving forward, even if it is one step at a time. Each day is a new chance to do better, to commit to what truly matters, and thus take a step closer to the purpose I feel God has for me. Impact of community and sharing the message. I believe we are made to live in community. No one makes this journey alone, and when we look around us, we see that there is incredible strength in sharing experiences and lessons learned. Community is a vital support, not only for those seeking a spiritual message but also for those already on the journey. Talking with others about our struggles and victories can be profoundly encouraging. When I connect with others who share the same faith, I feel that our message gains more strength. It is as if each testimony, each word of encouragement, is a piece that fits into a larger puzzle. By sharing the message, we not only encourage one another but also broaden the reach of that message. What once seemed like a whisper becomes a powerful resonance when multiple voices come together. I believe that by sharing what we learn, we are fulfilling a greater calling. Often, we are instruments in God's hands to touch someone's life. This makes me reflect on how I can be more intentional in sharing my own journey. Every conversation, every interaction becomes an opportunity to sow hope and faith. And as we do this collectively, we create an environment where everyone feels welcomed and strengthened. Moreover, the community helps us maintain accountability. When we are surrounded by people who have the same spiritual goals, we are encouraged to keep going. Life can be challenging, and we often find ourselves in situations that test our faith. Having a group to belong to, where we can share our difficulties and receive support, is essential for perseverance. And, of course, the impact of community extends beyond us. It reaches the world around us. When we unite to share God's message, we contribute to a chain of transformation. This is not just about us. It is about the impact we can have on the lives of others. By living and sharing our faith in community, we become catalysts for change, bringing light to places where there is darkness. Prayer and community of faith. Prayer is a powerful practice that connects us not only to God, but also to one another. When we come together in prayer, we are reminded that we are not alone. 
there is a special strength that comes from the union of hearts and minds in search of a greater purpose. I always feel renewed after a group prayer session, as if the worries and anxieties that troubled me were lifted away. Prayer in community also strengthens our faith. When we see the answers to others' prayers, it serves as a testimony of God's power. I remember an occasion when a friend was going through a tough time and we united to pray for him. The transformation that occurred not only in his life but also in ours was incredible. This made me realize that prayer is a tool God has given us to unite us. Creating an engaged and active faith community requires effort, but the fruits are immense. It is a space where we can be authentic, share our struggles and victories, and together seek God's will. I am happy to see how, by promoting prayer and fellowship, we can create bonds that go beyond words. The vulnerability established in a prayer environment allows us to truly know one another, supporting each other in our spiritual journey. Furthermore, prayer strengthens our mission to spread God's message. When we pray for our community and the people around us, we are asking God to give us the courage and wisdom to act. Prayer prepares us for the opportunities He offers, and this is essential for fulfilling our purpose. I always try to remember that each prayer is a seed planted, which can yield unexpected fruits. Finally, a call to prayer is also a call to action. We cannot limit ourselves to praying and waiting for things to happen. Prayer should move us to act, to share, and to be a light in the lives of others. Thus, by uniting prayer and action, we fulfill our role in a faith community, transforming not only our lives but also the lives of those around us. And so, as we reflect on everything we have discussed, it is time to take action. Are you ready to turn every moment of your day into a divine opportunity? Imagine what your life would be like if you truly prioritized the eternal over the temporary. What are you willing to sacrifice to invest in what really matters? Think of the small actions that can have a big impact. A sincere prayer, a gesture of love to your neighbor, or even sharing this video with someone who needs to hear this message. Remember, you are not alone on this journey. We are a community of the chosen, united in the pursuit of a greater purpose. Now, I invite you to pause and reflect. How are you using your time? Are you allowing yourself to be distracted? Or are you focused on the divine mission that God has placed in your heart? Let us together, as one body, seek the vigilance and wisdom that come from above. And before we finish, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, leave your comment, and share your experience. Together, we can make a difference. May God bless you, and see you next time.